Hello everyone. Am I visible and audible? Uh, Pradyot Shubham. The I have not forgotten about my class. Uh, the class was scheduled at seven thirty. I hope you are all there. Uh, can I get some indication that I am visible and audible properly? Yeah. So uh, today we are going to discuss important tests in dermatology. So what I have, uh, what I'll be doing is I have divided this lecture into two parts. The first part of the lecture I'll be taking today, and uh, the second part of the lecture I'll be taking tomorrow. Okay, so it'll be a half an hour session today. Uh, so let's move ahead. To introduce myself, I am Dr. Reshma Basani. I uh, am uh, associated with an academy since the past few months. I was associated initially as a faculty at K J Somaya Medical College, and uh, since the past uh, uh, since twenty twenty, I left K J Somaya, and now I am completely into private practice. I have my private practice at Matunga, Mumbai, and I am also a clinical research associate at the B J Wadia Hospital for Children. I love dermatology. I love clinical dermatology. I love teaching, and that's why I am here at an academy. Uh, I have my complete course on an academy, which spans eighteen hours, and um, high prints. So I have my complete course on an academy, which uh, spans eighteen hours, and uh, it's an uh, it's available on an academy, as well as I have my crash course, which is spanning twelve hours. and uh, now i am coming up with my um uh it is uh, i am coming up with my mcq course in uh, dermatology which is going to span 7 hours it starts off uh, from um, 28th of this month will go on up to 31st okay uh, so on 28th the, the timing will be between 4:15 to 6:15 pm On twenty ninth and thirtieth, it is between nine to ten in the morning. That's a Saturday. Nine to twelve, nine to eleven in the morning. That's on a Saturday and Sunday. And on Monday, thirty first, it will be between ten fifteen to eleven fifteen. Okay, so I, uh, yeah, hi Astha. Pradyot has asked me in the thumbnail of this video. It was shown that an academy plus prep ladder iconic subscription. Can you please explain what it is? Basically, uh, it is a subscription which combines both. Ah, uh, just let me tell you a bit in detail. Just a sec. yeah so basically this iconic subscription has been rolled out uh, and uh, with this subscription the students will able will be able to buy both an academy and prep ladder subscription in one click okay so uh, a 12 months subscription uh, which will co will cost you around 4583 rupees a month while an 18 month subscription will cost you around 3667 rupees a month a 2 year subscription will cost you 3208 rupees per month while a 3 year subscription will cost you around 2566 rupees for the month so that's the pricing of the neat pg subscription and so basically iconic subscription is where you combine both an academy and a prep ladder Okay, and you can give you can take both these subscription in one go. Okay, so that was about the pricing. Uh, now let's move ahead. Everyone ready for our class today? Astha, Shantanu, Prince, Pradyot, I hope you are there. Yeah. So, ah, uh, first what I'm going to deal with is the Woods lamp examination. Okay, now Woods lamp is basically it's a type of ultraviolet light which is passed through a filter. Okay, and this filter is containing nickel oxide and barium silicate. Okay, 
so now this when the light passes through this filter it allows only the rays which are 365 nanometer wavelength to pass through and we use this woods light to diagnose multiple conditions in dermatology okay now first among that is tinea capitis tinea capitis uh, on woods lamp especially when it is caused by the microsporum species it's going to show you a yellow green or a blue green fluorescence while when tinea capitis is caused by the trichophyton species it is negative on woods lamp the exception being favus it is favus is also caused by trichophyton shonlinii but it is positive on woods lamp okay i will also show you pictures okay uh, let's cover all things at one go in this table and then i will you know cover pictures as well so tinea capitis remember yellow green or blue green fluorescence uh, because of microsporum species now which are the microsporum species which fluoresce you can remember them by the mnemonic cats and dogs fight okay so c is canis a is odonai a d is odonai and f is ferruginium okay so the tinea capitis caused by microsporum species canis odonai and ferruginium are going to fluoresce on woods lamp trichophyton does not fluoresce on woods lamp but when it is caused by trichophyton shonlinii which causes favus it does fluoresce on woods lamp erythrasma causes coral red fluorescence due to porphyrin secretion erythrasma is caused by cornibacterium minuti simum okay and it causes brownish colored patches present in the interdigital web spaces of the toes can also happen in the groins or in the armpits pteriasis versicolor it's caused by malassezia species and it is responsible for secretion of pteridin and pteriolactone which causes a faint yellowish green fluorescence on woods lamp examination okay so usually erythrasma and pteriasis versicolor clinically they may look very similar okay so both of them can produce hyperpigmented macules in the armpits or in the groins but to differentiate the two an easy method is to use a woods lamp then pseudomonas pseudomonas is very characteristically producing the pigment called pyocyanin because of which the lesions look greenish in color uh, on uh, because of the presence of this pigment it also causes a yellowish green fluorescence on woods lamp examination scabies is one condition which you will 100% diagnose if you see a burrow okay so how do you make the burrow more prominent you take the fluorescent solution and you put it or place it onto the areas where you are more likely to find burrows like the web spaces uh, the wrists okay and so the fluorescent solution will fill the burrow and when you see it under a woods lamp that particular linear burrow will start becoming fluorescent okay so that's how you diagnose scabies uh, further in porphyria the urine feces the blister fluid also fluoresces red or pink vitiligo can be ivory or milky white in color which is very because vitiligo there is an autoimmune destruction of the melanocytes okay so the melanocytes are not present in the vitiligenous patch that is why that particular area on a uh, woods lamp it fluoresces ivory or milky white that's how you differentiate it from other mimics okay uh, for example melanin disorders for example melasma the epidermal melanin disorders they become more prominent while the dermal melanin disorders they become less prominent when you see them under a woods lamp ash leaf macules are seen in tuberous sclerosis so in tuberous sclerosis uh, you uh, it sometimes in fair skinned individuals it becomes difficult to look out for the hypopigmentation so that is why when you look look through a woods lamp you are able to identify the ash leaf macules better and they will have a bluish white color so this is the typical green fluorescence that you get in tinea capitis this is the typical coral red fluorescence that you get in erythrasma this is the faint yellow fluorescence that you see in pteriasis versicolor which is as i said because of the uh, the pteridin and pteriolactone 
okay so that completes uh, woods lamp examination am i clear any any doubts in the woods lamp examination you can ask me right away else we will move on to the second test that we do in dermatology very frequently and that is dioscopy okay so what is dioscopy and dioscopy is when you take a glass slide and when you press it on the skin it compresses the blood out of the small vessels due to and due to the resulting vasoconstriction it allows the evaluation of other colors of the skin okay so remember yes subhash pitreas is versicolor it's a superficial fungal infection of the skin i will also be elaborating further when i come to the koh mount so i will show you the pictures of clinical pictures of pitreas is versicolor as well okay so dioscopy is a procedure where you place a glass slide and you exsanguinate that area so that you can evaluate the other colors better okay so you do it in granulomatous conditions like lupus vulgaris it will show the classical apple jelly nodules you also use it for differentiating erythema and purpura erythema will disappear while purpura will remain unaltered erythema is basically just because of dilatation of the vessels so when you compress it using a transparent glass slide you will see that the uh, the vessels will get exsanguinated so that is why the erythema will disappear while purpura is basically because of the extravasation of the red blood cells outside the blood vessels so even if you do press it the rbcs are not going anywhere and hence purpura is going to remain unaltered okay so that is how you differentiate between erythema and purpura on dioscopy it's also used for differentiating nevus anemicus from nevus depigmentosus in nevus anemicus the size will increase while in nevus depigmentosus and in vitiligo it will remain unaltered okay i will just show you a few slides so that it's easier for you to understand the concept see the, these are the classical apple jelly nodules okay these apple jelly nodules they are basically caused because of the presence of granulomas okay and these granulomas they will produce the yellowish tinge okay when you do a dioscopy so you can see it positive in conditions like lupus vulgaris leishmaniasis and sarcoidosis next let's go to what is nevus depigmentosus nevus depigmentosus is also called as nevus achromaticus so it's going to usually present itself as a single well defined hypopigmented patch which is present since birth okay now what happens in nevus depigmentosus is that you know that the melanocytes they are going to produce melanin and this melanin is then transferred into the keratinocyte so one melanocyte transfers the melanin to 36 other keratinocytes and this is called as the epidermal melanin unit when there is a block okay in the transfer of the melanin from the melanocyte to the keratinocyte you get nevus depigmentosus okay so when you're going to apply a slide on this lesion the it's not going to change at all right the border is not lost and the merge the lesion doesn't merge into the surrounding skin so it's just a white patch and it will not change when you apply a glass slide on it okay so that's what you see on dioscopy of nevus depigmentosus histopathology if you do of this lesion you will find that the melanocytes may be normal or they may be slightly reduced okay but otherwise there is no gross abnormality seen correct so that was about nevus depigmentosus now how do you differentiate it from nevus anemicus nevus anemicus remember it's not a melanin disorder at all why the question of differentiating it from nevus depigmentosus or nevus achromaticus is because the uh, lesions appear hypopigmented okay so remember nevus anemicus is not a melanin disorder it presents as hypopigmented macules and basically this happens because of abnormal vasoconstriction because of an increased sensitivity of the blood vessels to catecholamines so this results in a localized area of skin causing blanching and hence consequent apparent hypopigmentation 
okay so if you take a histopathology of a patient with nevus depigmentosus uh, of pain nevus anemicus the normal there are going to be melanocytes which are normal and the melanin also is going to be normal yes epidermal melanin unit i mean the epidermal melanin is not going to be present because the melanocyte is unable to transfer the uh, melanin to the keratinocyte okay subhash so uh, so in nevus anemicus because it's basically uh, abnormal vasoconstriction and not a pigmentary anomaly that's why when you press it with a clean uh, transparent glass slide the lesion is going to apparently increase in size because the vessels are going to get blanched in the periphery as well correct so that's how you differentiate between two similar looking conditions nevus anemicus and nevus depigmentosus now let's go to the third a uh, test that we routinely do and that is koh mount now koh mount is basically uh, used for the diagnosis of multiple fungal conditions as well as certain other parasitic conditions which we will cover the first among them is pityriasis versicolor pityriasis versicolor will show a typical spaghetti and meatball appearance where you have spherical yeasts see these are the spherical yeast cells okay and these long filamentous structures Uh, which resemble banana or spaghetti okay so you see spaghetti meatball or banana and grapes appearance on the koh mount of pityriasis versicolor this is what clinically pityriasis versicolor looks like okay so it starts off as multiple hypopigmented perifollicular macules why is it perifollicular because this malassezia species that is malassezia fur fur malassezia globosa malassezia obtusa all these malassezia organisms no they like oil and as you know that the sebaceous gland it opens out into the hair follicle so the maximum amount of oil that you are getting is in the perifollicular location so that is why initially in pityriasis versicolor you see multiple perifollicular hypo or hyperpigmented macules which are scaly and then they coalesce together and they form a patch like this the typical scales that are associated with pityriasis versicolor have been described as fine brani powdery or furfuraceous scales since these scales are not very apparent clinically what you can do to make them more apparent is to scratch the lesion with the help of a nail so that is called as the nail sign or the besnier sign or the coop the ongle sign now if you want to prove it if sometimes if you are not very confident of your diagnosis you want to prove it that it is pityriasis versicolor then what you do is you take a scraping of those fine scales onto a clean glass slide add a drop of koh keep it on for some time around 10 15 minutes and then visualize it under a microscope and then you will typically see the yes swapna of course it is very useful for all fmg people as well don't worry you can always attend this class so uh yes uh, you will be able to see a typical uh, spaghetti meatball appearance on koh mount as well so this is the typical scratch sign coop the ongle sign nail sign or besnier sign where you see that the scaling is much better by firmly scratching the skin okay so that was about pityriasis versicolor now we go on to cutaneous dermatophytosis cutaneous dermatophytosis are nothing but the tinea infections in the tinea infections you can visualize that there are these uh, long hyphae branching fungal hyphae which will give you a conclusive diagnosis that it is a dermatophytic infection so now these this is these are the lesions uh, now where now see most of the times tinea corporis cruris it's a clinical diagnosis okay most of the times you can just look at it and diagnose it but sometimes what happens is when the patient has been applying corticosteroids okay when the patient has been applying over the counter corticosteroids for a long long time you see two entities you see tinea incognito and you see topical steroid modified tinea okay so this is a case of topical corticosteroid modified tinea how is it different from the regular tinea you can see that in addition to a single edge you also see another edge so this is double edge tinea which is suggestive of use of top topical corticosteroids inadvertently to treat tinea 
okay so this is topical steroid modified tenia when you get multiple ring within rings then you call it as tenia pseudo imbricata okay so this is the tenia pseudo imbricata which is a complication of topical steroid abuse in cases of tenia corporis see in this patient this is the same patient okay so you can see that uh there is a patch out here it's not very classical tenia right so you would call it as tenia incognito incognito means it is not easily recognizable so why is this happening because the patient has been applying high potency topical corticosteroid on the patch of tenia and you can see that the classical lesions of tenia where you have annularity where you have scaling that is not present and you are just seeing it as a hyperpigmented ill defined patch out here okay so this is tenia incognito so if i want to confirm my diagnosis i can take a koh mount and i can prove it that uh, uh, i can prove that it is uh, tenia corporis so also please appreciate that the surrounding skin if you see around the patch has become hypopigmented it has become lighter in color you can also see these small small dots out here basically that's an acne form eruption which is a kind of a side effect that happens because of topical steroid abuse as well as you can appreciate here these linear striae okay you know that when you apply a topical steroid especially on a fold it has a higher propensity to get absorbed into the skin and can cause atrophy it can also cause these kind of ugly looking stri which is a permanent damage to the skin so definitely one should be avoiding the use of any kind of over the counter preparations to treat these kind of uh, fungal infections and definitely one should pre avoid prescribing topical applications which contain combinations of steroids along with antibiotics antifungals and antiprotozoal agents which are very very readily uh, available subhash says uh, site of predilection for pityriasis versicolor is the face yes it is the face it is also concomitantly present on the back on the chest because these are the sites which are sebum rich okay so they are Uh, containing a lot of sebaceous gland and as i told you the malassezia species it loves oil so it's going to present itself at all the oily areas of the skin next we use the koh mount to confirm the diagnosis of cutaneous candidiasis as you can see there are these pseudo hyphae you can see these pseudo hyphae out here and there are these spores okay so there are pseudo hyphal elements as well as spores and this will give you a conclusive diagnosis that you are dealing with cutaneous candidiasis uh, for example if a patient is coming to you with this kind of a presentation where there is a white colored uh, membrane on the hard palate as well as on the buccal mucosa as well as on the tongue your differentials include of course oral candidiasis to confirm your diagnosis you can do a koh mount now there are various types of uh, oral candidiasis the first is the acute pseudo membranous variant acute pseudo membranous variant can be easily scraped off okay using a spatula uh, you cannot scrape it off unlike the other causes of uh, membrane okay so you can scrape it off that is what uh, uh, that you cannot scrape it off and that is what you see in acute pseudo membranous variant then there is a chronic pseudo membranous variant then there is an acute erythematous variant which is because of the use of broad spectrum antibiotics then there is a chronic erythematous variants which happens because of uh, dentures the use of ill fitting dentures or it's also called as chronic atrophic candidiasis and there is an entity which is called as chronic hypertrophic candidiasis which you see as a part of chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis okay on the skin candidiasis would present itself as an area of maceration erythema as well as the presence of multiplied satellite pustules so remember satellite pustules are something that are very classical for the uh, for cutaneous candidiasis okay so what you can do is you can take a mount of those pustules and you can take that pus onto a slide and subject it to koh and you will see the presence of the typical hyphae pseudo hyphae and spores apart from that you can also use it to diagnose tenia capitis now tenia capitis can be inflammatory or non inflammatory the non inflammatory variant of tenia capitis uh, includes two includes the black dot variant and the 
grey patch variant now the black dot variant is caused by the endothrix organisms what i mean by endothrix organisms means the the if you can see here this particular spores are localized within the hair shaft okay so in endothrix organisms the uh, spores are localized the fungal elements are localized within the hair shaft so the hair shaft becomes brittle okay and when the hair shaft becomes brittle it breaks off at the surface of the scalp correct which are the organisms which cause endothrix infection remember the mnemonic tv tv is always inside the house correct so tv that is tonsurans and violaceum are responsible for black dot variety of tinea capitis why black dot because because of its endothrix localization the hair shaft becomes very weak it breaks off at the surface of the scalp and that appears as black dots okay so you see it as black dots out here right can you see these black dots very well right so that is suggesting black dot tinea capitis unfortunately this fungus does not flourish under the woods lamp okay this is the typical black dots basically they are the hair which are broken off at the surface of the scalp because of the weakness in because of the endothrix localization of the fungal elements then comes the gray patch which is caused by ectothrix organisms which are the ectothrix organisms the ectothrix organisms are uh, can be uh said as cats and dogs fight okay so canis odonai and ferruginium as i told you all these three they are going to fluoresce under the woods lamp and they are going to show you a greenish colored fluorescence and uh, as you can see in this picture if you take a koh mount you will be able to see the fungus which will be lying outside the hair shaft okay so these are the fungal elements these blue colored things are the spores which are present outside the hair shaft so remember cats and dogs will fight outside the house and tv is inside the house so violaceum and uh, trichophyton violaceum uh, and uh, trichophyton uh, trichophyton violaceum and trichophyton tonsurans as i said they will be present in endothrix variant while the cats and dogs will fight outside so they will be canis odona and ferruginium will fight outside the house okay so they will be responsible for the ectothrix variant okay so this is what a gray patch will look like you will see multiple patches of uh, scanty hair and the hair will be covered with uh, they will have a dull gray kind of an appearance and this is with this will be the kind of greenish fluorescence that you will appreciate in these patients and if you see the the it will be an ectothrix infection where the organisms will be localized outside the hair shaft then you can also do a koh mount uh, in cases of vaginal discharge okay in vaginal discharge the most common cause of vaginal discharge please remember is bacterial vaginosis you will see it as homogeneous adherent kind of a vaginal discharge which has a foul smell okay and to confirm the diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis you can take that discharge put it onto a slide add one drop of 10% koh and that will give you a fishy odor okay so that is called as the whiff test which is very diagnostic in cases of bacterial vaginosis there are other criteria as well which are called as the amsels criteria to diagnose bacterial vaginosis one and one of the criteria is the presence of a clue cell a clue cell is a vaginal epithelial cell which is studied by the organisms like gardenella vaginalis okay so since this cell is a clue to the diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis it is called as a clue cell okay next it is also useful to diagnose mites okay so what you can do is when you see a burrow in scabies and you want to 100% confirm it you can scrape the burrow and take the scrapings onto a slide add koh and you will be able to see the fungal organism can you see this this is the sarcoptes scabi mite okay and these are nothing but the 
eggs of the Sarcoptis cavi mite and you also have Skybella. Skybella is the fecal material of the Sarcoptis cavi mite. Okay, so these one, two, three, these yellow colored things, they are basically all the mites. Okay, the Sarcoptis cavi mites and these translucent structures are nothing but the eggs. Okay, so you can it it can be used to diagnose uh, scabies as well. Next, it can also be used to diagnose a condition which is a deep fungal infection. Uh, Srigiri, uh, am I, uh, today is my Anan Academy class. Uh, I am on YouTube today. And uh, my MCQ class begins on 28th and will go up to 31st. So I will see you there Srigiri. Okay. Uh, now uh, chromoblastomycosis it is a deep fungal infection which is caused by pigmented fungi okay so it is chromo chromoblastomycosis chromo means pigmentation right so it is a chronic infection which is caused by pigmented fungi which include phyalophora and fonsacia species so usually there will be an inoculation through a thorn pick, prick and uh, then you get a warty cauliflower like growth on the foot on the leg. Uh, if you see the histopathology, you will see a foreign body like granuloma and there will be groups of fungal cells within the giant cells. Now, these fungal cells are brown in color. Okay, they, so this is what a clinical picture would look like. The patient will be a farmer. He will give you a history that there was a thorn prick and following that there was this verrucous growth. Okay, so that is, this is very classical uh, chromoblastomycosis and when you take a histopathology you will see these typical copper penny bodies please remember there are multiple names for this copper penny bodies medlar bodies muriform bodies sclerotic bodies all mean the same thing okay so they are classically seen in cases of histopathology within the giant cell you will see them okay these brown colored structure basically they are the fungal elements you can also see them on a koh mount okay on a koh mount uh, you can uh, see them as muriform sclerotic copper penny or medlar bodies this has come very recently okay in the neat exam uh, please remember you can see this you can't miss this out this is very classical copper penny okay so the koh mount is useful for us to diagnose even the deep fungal infections like chromoblastomycosis so uh, the lecture ends today so i'll just give you a brief uh, revision of whatever i have told you we have covered today uh, woods lamp examination then we covered dioscopy we covered uh, a koh mount okay so we covered these three tests today tomorrow we'll be continuing same time between 7 30 to 8 the other tests in dermatology okay so i hope to see you all tomorrow okay uh, just to remind you my mcq class is on 28th to 31st and i already have my complete course uh, which is as well as the crash course which exists on the unacademy website Okay, so see you all. Bye.